Hi guys, it's Kamil here and I'm coming to you with the second part of my book haul. As I mentioned in my first part, part that was uh, focusing on fiction, this time I'm going to do non-fiction. The link to the first part will be somewhere here. Okay, so with no further ado, there's a quite a few books that I want to show you. I divided them in some kind of categories, uh, um, at least um, a few of those. So the first segment will be on uh, Islam. I told you that when I was going back from India, I went to a bookstore at the airport and I bought four books. One of them was Amitav Ghosh one that I shown you in my previous video. Three others were the ones that I will show you today. First two, uh, the third one that I've read will be later on. So the first two are Letters to a Young Muslim by Oman Saif Gobash. This one reminds me a bit Taisi quotes Between the World and Me in a manner that this one is written as a letter by Omar Saif Gopash to his older son explaining him where Islam is currently in the world and its political environment. It sounds really interesting. Omar Saif Gobash offers a short and highly readable manifesto that tackles our current global crisis with the training of an experienced diplomat and the personal responsibility of a father. That's, that sounds great. And I think it will be great to read those two together. Uh, then I have also Islam. It's Graham Wood, The Way of the Strangers Encounters with the Islamic State. I never seen it anywhere else but when i picked it up in the bookstore this sounds extremely interesting greenwood's the way of the strangers is a reviting intimate journey into the minds of the islamic state's true believers one which upends our understanding of their psychology character and aims from the streets of Cairo to the mosques of London to the suburbs of Melbourne, Wood, a national correspondent for The Atlantic, interviews supporters, recruiters and sympathizers of the world's most infamous jihadist group. Sounds brilliant, right? Then there is one that I'm currently reading. This one is in Polish. It's by Tad Benjalun. Tad Benjalun is a famous Moroccan writer that writes in French. He's a highly appreciated writer. I read his novel last year, and The Happy Marriage, and I absolutely loved it. It ended up being in my top favorite books of 2016. And this is his non-fiction position in which he explains uh, Islam to his kids living in France and being educated in France. Uh, it's a brilliant one so far. I, I really like it in a simple way. He, he portrays the history of Islam and their believers and the shades of their believers because as in every religion you have crazy people and very good people. Yeah, so uh, triviality, but that's true. So yeah, this is the one. And then I have Reza Aslan, No God but God. Uh, this is the English title. This is Polish edition. Uh, of course, you know Reza Aslan. He's a super famous historian that deals with religions in general. He uh, written this famous book about Jesus Christ a few years back. I will put a um, cover over here. I don't remember the title now. So this is uh, the origins, the evolution and the future of Islam. And the main title, as I already said, is No God but God. Sounds super interesting. I have a book that I received from Jeffrey. Uh, this was the fourth one that he sent to me for my birthday. This is Gloria Steinem, My Life on the Road. Uh, Gro Gloria Steinem is a famous activist that I probably should know more about. So looking forward to read this one. It got really good reviews and Jeffrey loved it. So that's a recommendation, right? Then the last book that I picked up at Delhi's airport is The Incredible History of India's Geography by Sanjeev Sanyal. I find it really interesting to read about the history of the country from a geographical angle and told by the native of the country. Generally, the history of India that we know is often told by British people, um, British historians. Obviously, Great Britain was heavily involved in India. It was the pearl of British crown uh, during colonization times. So it was quite refreshing to, to have a peek at Indian history through the eyes of native Indian. Highly recommended. I gave it three stars. 
I mean, obviously, there are some parts that sound a bit subjective. Nevertheless, it was a very enjoyable read, uh, and I think that it, in a very clearly manner, introduces you to Indian history. And this is a fascinating one, so, yeah. Then, another segment is on Foucault. I think I've shown you the first one actually already. I'm currently reading the Foucault Reader. Then I have Michel Foucault, Punish and Discipline, and The Birth of the Prison. This is his, uh, probably one of the most famous positions. I have it in English, but I decided to get it in Polish as, I mean, he's hard enough to be read in the native tongue, so I decided to make my life a bit easier and read it in Polish. Then I have one of the many books that collects his lectures that he given uh, when he was a professor at Collège de France, and this one is on the government of the living. So yeah, this is this is the one. You probably already seen at least trailers or heard about the movie Silence with Adam Driver. And this is a book that was kind of the inspiration for the movie. So it's about the history of Jesuits in uh, Japan, 300 years of silence, that's Polish title. Uh, the original title actually is In Search of Japan's Hidden Christians. Looking forward to read this one, as I already said, I tend to say uh, when I pick up any of those books. And then I have two super beautiful editions, and I absolutely am uh, hyped and very excited about those two. I started to read it, so uh, this is the History of Beauty. Uh, no, this one actually is the History of Agnes by Umberto Eco, and this is the History of Beauty by Umberto Eco. Uh, those two books are brilliantly published with tons of photographies and uh, very good catalog-like, uh, album-like uh, paper. And those are written in a very accessible form. Then I have three more books that I want to show you. Actually, I should have shown you that uh, earlier. So this is Hannah Arendt, The Origins of uh, Totalitarianism. This is Polish edition. I'm really excited that I picked it up uh, because I was looking for it for quite a while. It, it was hard to get it. So uh, looking forward to read this one. I read quite a bit of Hannah Arendt when I was studying in Israel and I had a super interesting classes, Holocaust in the Contemporary Culture. Then I have uh, one book that was sent to me as a gift. Uh, Didi, thank you very much. I was really excited about this one. The Fire This Time, A New Generation Speaks About Race by Jasmine Ward that edited that. I haven't picked this book up because it was crazy expensive uh, all the time, 20 bucks, I believe. And uh, I talked about it with Didi and she kindly sent it to me, which was super nice of her. And thank you very much, Didi. I'm, uh, I'm going to pick it up in uh, March still. So that's on my very short to be read list. Then I received a book for a review by Michael Anthony, Civilized, please correct me if I butcher it, Civilized. This is a memoir of the Iraq veteran and I was a bit hesitant when I'm, uh, I'm always a bit hesitant when I'm contacted with the request for a book review as most of the books and the requests I receive are asked by the people that obviously have no idea what I'm reading and what my interest is. So there would be thrillers, uh, YA romance. I mean, they didn't even watch a single minute of my videos if they think that I would be interested in YA romance. But when I was asked about this one, I was, I was quite excited. And there is a super charming letter here. I know that it's not written for me, probably it's written for everybody that accepted this book, but nevertheless it's addressed to me and it's a really nice and very humble one. So just let me read you one paragraph. A few years ago I was sitting on my bank in Iraq and I was counting the different numbers of things I would experience before I die. For instance, I looked at the amount of books I read in typical month too. I was 24 years. And then I looked at the average age expectancy of American male, roughly 79 years. As a young soldier in the middle of a war zone, I knew there was a chance that I would never make it to that average age of 79. But if I did make it, I was curious to know how many books 
I could look forward to reading. My number was 1392. I'm not sure what your number is and I hope that it's much higher than mine and that you live a long and happy life but whatever your number is I want to thank you for letting my memoir be one of them. That's charming, right? Yeah, I think that's it. So uh, tell me if you read any of those books. Tell me if you plan to read any of those. And what are you reading now as for nonfiction? Talk to you soon. Bye bye.